Yo, welcome back to Containing Luxury. On this episode, we're actually gonna be putting some siding on the 20 foot bunkhouse we have here in West Palm Beach. Let's get started. Okay, so before we get started on putting the siding on that thing, the very first thing we wanna do because we're going to be painting it gray, so it kind of matches my house back there, is install the two by fours, which we're probably going to have to rip down, I think, to two by three. So I'm going to see if they have any two by threes over at Home Depot or Lowe's to fit in the little recessed valleys so that we have something to secure the cool little siding trim we're going to put on this thing. So we're going to paint the whole thing gray. But before I do that, I want to adhere the two by threes directly to this factory paint, which is gonna be a much better bond. And then I'll paint it before I put on the siding pieces. But I want that substructure secured directly to the factory paint on it. So we're gonna run over, we're gonna get, we already have the paint because we painted the 40 foot in the front. If you guys didn't watch that, there'll be a link to the video in the description. But uh, so we're gonna use the same color on this one. So we're gonna run over, we're gonna grab some glue, grab the, uh, the two by threes that we need and the siding, ideally. But there's shortages of materials. So we'll hopefully be able to find everything in one place. So let's find out, let's go. Okay, so to do this job, you're gonna need a large caulk gun, the same glue that we always use pretty much on all of our builds, the Loctite PL3X Premium. It's expensive, but it works. Tape measure, a drill, some drill bits, a framing square, an impact driver, or you could use the drill if you don't have one, but the impact driver is gonna make your life easier. Circular saw, and a McDonald's Coke. Wait, what? Maybe not the McDonald's Coke, but all the rest of this is definitely needed. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is pre-drill for where we're gonna put our screws. Now, these are the screws we're gonna be using. Tech screws, they're self-drilling, which also called uh, self-tappers. So they can drill directly through the metal. So I wanna pre-drill the wood, but I don't wanna use a bit that's gonna to be too big. So I'm probably just gonna pre-drill with that. So it still grabs the wood as well. So a little bit smaller is my drill bit. And I'm only gonna be, cause I want as few penetrations through that metal on that container as possible. I'm only gonna pre-drill probably one, like maybe a foot down from the top. And then another one about a foot down or a foot up from the bottom. Now, this has this big head on it and I want this to sink but still grab the wood really well. So I'm now gonna take probably that size which will be, no, nope, eh, the washer's still gonna catch it. So I'm gonna go just a little bit bigger. So this monster, oh, that's the wrong drill. I'm gonna put this in just to countersink it ever so slightly. So I'm barely drilling this. Okay, so I just want enough that the screw is gonna sit inside that pocket. Okay, so now when I set those screws, this tech screw, the head will sit inside that pocket and it won't, it'll be flush, so when I put the boards across, it won't be an issue. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I know that this side is my side that's gonna be facing me when I'm screwing it in, because I countersunk it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over, grab my glue gun with my crazy Loctite Premium, and I like to do just like a little S turn down the whole thing.
And I'm using a good amount of glue, but not a ridiculous amount of glue. It's okay if it squeezes out on the side of the container, it's not the end of the world. I'm gonna come back up here and add a little more. This glue had been sitting for a little while. So I just wanna make sure it grabs really well. So that first part might have been a little thicker. Now we can grab two of our tech screws, our impact driver that we know has a 5 16 head, fits right in there. Carry this guy over. Try not to get glue on anything, including your truck. And we'll get the pine needle off the side. Take this guy and we'll stick it right in there. Now you can see it's pretty flush right there. So it's sticking out at a little bit of the bottom right here because of this weld down here. So what I'm gonna do is just preset the screw so it makes it easier for me a little bit. Now I'm gonna lift it up just a hair. That's gonna pull it back ever so slightly because now it's above that weld. Okay, so now that thing is really grabbed. You can see it's squeezing the glue out on the sides. So I know that's that's in there nice and tight. Now, if I really wanted to, to make this a little easier on myself, so you can see it kind of pulled the board off. These self tappers take a little while to drill themselves through. So what I could do, now that I have that piece holding itself in place, I can go and I could take a smaller drill bit like this one. It doesn't even need to be, you actually don't want it to be that big. And this, I'll pre-drill Grab my big ladder. I'm gonna pre-drill the hole through the metal and then the screw will drew, do the rest. So I can pre-drill this, just kind of hold it in place. Some tough metal. So you'll get spots sometimes where like you literally just cannot drill through it. I don't know what, I snapped two drill bits, burnt out three screws on that same hole. Took, put a different screw at an angle just to get off of maybe there was a seam or something in the metal here. And set this one, no problem. Didn't even counter, or didn't even countersink the screw. It drove it right through it. So if you get to a stubborn spot like that, it might happen. Just uh, just skip it and go to a different location and you can always fill this. And I'm probably literally gonna fill this with glue just so water can't get behind here because this is not a pressure treated board. And now I'm gonna caulk down the side with glue as well. And then I'll fill that hole. And then when I paint this thing, it will be completely sealed in. So it's at least an added layer of protection. So it shouldn't rot out for a long time. But that stuff happens. So just keep that in mind, you know can't always set a screw right where you want it also keep in mind you don't know what's behind that wall or hopefully you do because you have your plant so you might have your whole container built out and the siding's the last thing you're doing make sure you're not putting a screw right where you have some plumbing pipes on the back side of that wall so you're thinking about the thickness or the length of the screw and what's behind that wall all the time
time to start painting. You're not going to see any of this, but I still want to make sure it's covered and sealed really well. So some of it's kind of caulked in with the glue, but I'm still going to go back in silicone afterwards before I put the siding on so that these boards are really well protected since they're not pressure treated. I want to make sure they're really well coated. Florida is toasty. Okay, so now that we got all of the painting done ski, we're gonna go ahead and I bought those 12 foot long Trex, I keep calling them Trex, but they're PVC or composite deck boards. I'm gonna cut them exactly in half and we're gonna put those in just this one section, which is why I only put the backer, the substructure in that certain area. And I couldn't put that one directly in the middle because it would have been on the ridge. And I want these to be as close to the end as possible. So the Trex boards have these little hidden fasteners. So we're gonna hide those. So hopefully we won't even see any screws when we're done. And we're gonna put some a little aluminum channel on the ends to cover the cuts. And hopefully it'll look pretty cool. So we'll have like the painted metal and then we'll have a whole section of horizontal wood that just kind of gives it some architectural dimension. So let's get start putting those in. Okay, so we officially have all the decking up. So now I got this aluminum uh, angle from Home Depot. And now I'm just gonna apply that crazy glue that we use on the whole inside of it. And that's gonna be our cap for the, ooh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, that's going to be the cap. Now I want to make sure that this does not squeeze out. So I'm trying to put it only in the corner. I'm going to very gently push this thing on. 
I want to be generous with the glue, but not too crazy. When in doubt, use the inside of your pant leg. Okay, so now I'm going to take some trusty old blue tape, get a couple pieces ready. I'm using blue tape because it will grab, but it doesn't pull the paint off since I just painted these today. I want to make sure that it doesn't damage the paint on the aluminum, that I just found a brown that was close to the same color as the decking, and I just sprayed them out. Now we got a fancy cap, so it doesn't have to be perfect on the cuts, but that cap it gives you a little bit of play. So now I just got one more I got to do on this side over here, and uh, our super cool wall will be done. That's it. That's it for today. And uh, we got all the painting done. We got our deco wall built, and hopefully you guys liked it. Make sure to hit the comments if you like the colors. If you want to know the color, I'll drop it in the comments as well. If you want to paint your container like that. So as always, make sure to like, subscribe, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Containing luxury and our 20-foot bunkhouse that just got decked out. We out.